Hey, how are you doing? This is Gray from Wakazashi's Tea House over in Japan. Are you good? Are you Genki? I'm great, thank you. A bit chilly though. Okay, I have a review of the new issue of The Riddler, Year One. Issue 3 came out today, Tuesday, February 28th. Now this is priced 4 99 but you do get extra pages for that and you get some killer art in here. I really like this artist's style. It's an artist called Steven or Steven Subic, a European artist who's supposedly making his American comic book debut with this series. Now this is written by Paul Dano, the actor who played the Riddler in the Batman movie. And I tell you what, he's writing better than a lot of the well-known comic book writers that I've been reading for quite a while, especially a lot of the current stuff. This issue is another fantastic issue. This is a huge recommend from me. Um, I think they've got better if it's gone on. The first issue was brilliant. Second one, very good too. This, um, you see things in this that you think you expect Batman to be doing. You know, you see the, the character of the Riddler, um, Edward, is it Edward Nashton? He's doing detective work that Batman should be doing, but he's kind of stumbling and bumbling his way into it, but approaching it very logically. It's so good how they show it, and the visual storytelling in this issue is, it's next level. I talk about it in my story summary, I'll show you some of the art, but first of all, let me show you some of the art from inside here. Let's have a look. This is just one example. You've got the real atmospheric, like dark Gotham City look of it from the movie. A minimal use of colours, the shades, like almost dark grey pastely shades there, but very, very atmospheric, as I said, very grim and dark, but it just looks like a real city. It looks lived in. Let me show you one more. Here we go. This is a page from towards the end, but this style, it just... Reminds me of the good old days of great Vertigo comics, you know, remember those? And beautiful, just beautiful use of art there, look at that. Not just the art, but the text, the way he uses text, the writing, that kind of scratchy white writing there. Yeah, listen, I could sit here and just praise this light for too long, but I'm going to get to my story summary because that's what you're here for, right? Who wants to see me or listen to me, blah, 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 eh? Hopefully you do. Okay, so I'll give my um, short story summary as usual. I don't worry, I don't spoil the end. I'm only going to show um, some of the pages from the issue. There's so much more in this. It's a huge, huge recommend. So please go out and buy it and support it because you've got to support physical media. I wish I could get a physical copy. I had to make do with digital. Okay, so here we go. Please keep watching. We open with an envelope being left at the Gotham City Police Department. It's addressed to the police commissioner in scratchy red writing and there's a USB taped to it. A question mark is penciled on the USB. Can barely breathe. What's this? The desk officer objects. Hey man, I'm just dropping this off for the guy you know. Said his name was Patrick Parker. Switch scenes to Edward's office at KTMJ. Edward's boss is asking if he's found anything unusual in the Wayne account. Edward hasn't but tells his boss he'll let him know if he does. He's watching you, Edward. He doesn't realize you're watching him. The Riddler, Year One, Chapter Three. I know what I must become. On the next page, we see Edward watching the New Beginnings Animal Rescue Building. A patrol car cruises by, but doesn't stop. Why aren't they stopping? I have to comment here on the art by Steven Subic. I love the way he draws the streets of Gotham. Dark, moody, the people appear as shadowy shapes, vague and unsettling. I see danger around every corner. Edward is surrounded by strange and frightening creatures. They appear to be visions, hallucinations, seeping out from the dark places in his subconscious. I need help. He walks to his apartment, stepping over the bodies of dead rats. Someone is waiting outside, half hidden in the shadows, speaking of disease. Edward the Rat, Cage 5H. How, how, how did you know my... Edward hurries inside and locks the door. He doesn't feel safe anywhere, even at home. We see a small, creepy figure in the room staring at Edward. I love the way artist Subic has painted the figure's glasses white. They stand out against the backdrop of darkness. It's a striking image. Okay, I want to read a bit from this page. It basically breaks down a day in Edward's life. Wake up, Edward. Brush your teeth, Edward. Don't forget to eat, Edward. Don't chew on glass, Edward. Go to work. Be good. Don't say anything. You're risking your life. No one's coming, Edward. Then we see Gotham Mountain Security bringing in boxes that Edward's boss signs for, foreshadowing events coming up later in the story. 
Look at this page as a good example of great comic book storytelling. There's almost no dialogue, but we understand how this character is feeling from the panel progression. She has a baby who's making her smile, but a few moments later she's crying in tears. She's clearly very upset about something. Then we see an email offering information about her father. She clicks a link and it leads to an anonymous chat room. The person messaging her is trying to help, but mentioning the police terrifies a young woman and she severs a connection. It was Edward, of course, but is clearly in over his head. He heads down to the docks and breaks into the waterfront industries building. It is abandoned and looks like it has been for a while. Again, we have excellent visual storytelling here with a minimal use of text. Just look at the panels. On the next page, Edward sees a shadow at the window. Is it Batman? He wishes it was. Okay, let me skip ahead to this page where we learn more about Gotham Mountain security. It is Gotham's oldest and safest way to store confidential information. Established long before the digital revolution, it's still used today by corporations and rich people. The location is an old copper mine outside the city. Then here, Edward imagines Batman breaking his way inside, and we get this jarring panel showing a silhouetted Batman with two pinpricks of light for eyes. It's very unsettling and it gives you the impression of a demon or creature from beyond. The other. The alien. Okay, there's still plenty of story to go, but I'll stop here. Okay, here's one of the variant covers. It's my favourite one. It's by an artist called Miko Suayan. I think I'm doing that right. I hope so. But look at it. Great image. Straight out of the movie. It's like a comic book version of the movie scene. Yeah, really cool. And here is a preview of the next issue cover. So it's number four. That will be out hopefully um, towards the end of March. Not sure who the artist is on this. I can see a signature there, but it's not too clear. But yeah, looking good. Looks like we're going to go back into Edward's childhood. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this review. Please drop me a comment. Let me know what you thought of the issue. Are you buying the series? I'll tell you what, I really recommend it. I hope you can get that from this video. And I hope to see you in a future video. Okay, this is Grey from Wakazashi's Tea House, signing off for the night. Matane.